Welcome to Shook Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here for a review. Salty, do you want to tell them what we're reviewing this week? This is a full review of Again But Better by Christine Riccio, better known on BookTube as Poland Banana Books. That's right. We've done a read-along series for the book, and here we are in the ultimate video in the series, the review of the book itself, we've got three good things, three bad things. Uh, quotes? We'll go with quotes. Full literary breakdown, rating, and recommendation based on the text by Christine Riccio. Are you ready for this? Oh my god, is it Christine? Have I said Christina? No, you said Christine this whole time. Okay. It's fine. I'm glad that, you know, five weeks into this reading, You've got the author's name down. You make I, me well, <laughs> I'm so happy. Well, there was you. a moment there where I was like, wait a minute. I don't know if I... I this, wasn't, this would not have been a purposely or purposefully disrespectful thing. It would have just been I didn't know her name. Fair. Adrian. Yes. Where do you want to start with this? Uh, give a little breakdown. A little just breakdown. a little breakdown. So if you are joining us for the first time and you haven't read this book, we are going to spoil it and get used to it. What happens in this novel? Shane is a young 20-something. Shane goes to London because she is going to pursue her dreams of being a writer. So she goes away for uh, basically an exchange semester. She lies to her parents, tells mommy and daddy they're going to pay for every, or, you know, that she's going to be a doctor, she's going to go study in London, they pay for everything. Right, she only lies to them so they'll pay for everything. So they'll pay for right? everything. Right, so just, let's get that straight. She meets a boy. She meets Pilot Pin and falls just in love with him. Just in love. Uh, but it doesn't work out, but that's okay. Because she goes back in time and gets to try it all over once more. And that's pretty much it. That's what happens. Yeah. Adrian. Yeah. Give me three good things about this novel. Um, I've, number <laughs> one. Number one. I've certainly never read this before. Fair. Number two. Shane is a real person. No comment. Number three. There were moments with potential, potential. Potentially, it would have had potential. Okay. My good things, uh, this is a very fresh piece. These characters may be relatable to someone. That person is not me. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, number two, this is the power of BookTube at work. This wholeheartedly would not exist without BookTube. Yeah, no one's publishing this. Absolutely not. And number three... Well, you don't have to read the last 20 pages, at least. You get to finish early, and you feel good about yourself. Yeah, it's like when, uh, it's like senior day in high school. Yeah, you just when skip they those you, last you bits there, because you don't need the deleted scenes, the letter, the dance. The last nine chapters. Yeah, it's not necessary. Three bad things. Um, one, this is a tone-deaf and ignorant novel. Two, no one herein is worth rooting for or necessarily against. And three, I present to you again but better. That's a bad thing. That good, huh? Three bad things. Uh, this is, I, I, I'm, not, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna alter my little writing note here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is borderline dangerous. Uh, not only for the impressionable audience that it's being sold and marketed to, uh, this is disturbing content. If not dangerous, certainly potentially... Um, oh, I had the word. If not dangerous, at least harmful. Absolutely so. Uh, number two, the writing demonstrates no skill, uh, nor am I sure there was any editing in this. I will disagree with you on that point. Of That's fine. Uh, number three, this is possibly the worst plot that I've ever read. This is ridiculous. It's the same plot that you get two to three times times a year in Hollywood. Absolutely so. And honestly, I said it from our first video. I'll say it again. It's the quest for a good boyfriend. That's all this novel's about. Anyway, so we normally have our favorite quotes from this novel. Um, that might go a little south here. Do you have anything you want to talk about how great it sounded? You know, or? I lost the page, but I've got just one that is... Oh, here we go. 306. Um... I swallow. <laughs> ah, nice. That sounds like something an author would do. My apologies aren't working. They're still upset. How long will they be upset? What else can I do? I'm just going to stop with those there. Well, um, let, let, me, let, let me illuminate that. Read it one more time. 
My apologies aren't working. They're still upset. How long will they be upset? What else can I do? I am a member of management in retail. That is my thought process with an irate customer. I do not know said irate customer. Said irate customer is not my parent. That's fair. Right? <sighs> yeah. I, so normally we have quotes. Uh, I Be completely <clears throat> honest, I am not trying to bash this. We yeah. read this. Here's the thing. I'll be goddamned. I try to give that due, the due diligence of our review format to everything that we review because I see it as my duty in the channel that we have composed. I can't do it. No. I've got uh, nothing. There is not a single quote in here I would say it's worthy of, I, I would highlight to want to share with someone. There's highlights. Oh, there's highlights and notes, but there's lowlights. So, where do you want to start with this? Um, I am not sure. I have several rant level places to go. So for anyone who's here for the first time in one of our reviews, the reason that we've fractured the read along from the review is sort of that it feel, it feels, it felt on occasion forced in the review because we would be discussing story level things rather than novel level things. So there are many novel level things here that are worth complaining about. It, it, what stands out to you? Uh, one of my uh, big points that I wanted to bring up, and I think it's an overarching theme throughout this here, at one point, I think it was very early on, you said this was a novel of entitlement. And I think that's a big point of this novel here. This character, is uh, has the feeling of entitlement. She believes she's entitled to everything. It's her way or no way, and everyone owes her the world. It's damn which which again, that's fine. That's fine. It's you can have that character set that character forth and your reader will learn from that character. You can't market it as YA. Correct. And we talked a little bit last week about how there is a difference between YA and new adult fiction. I think that kind of circles into that there. However, this is Unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. One of your favorite books is American, Psy uh, American Psycho, Brett Easton Ellis. That is a despicable character. You've made this point many times before, but he is despicable for a purpose. This is not supposed to be a despicable character. Right. This is a despicable character. There are no great qualities about Shane. There's no endearing charm, no romantic notions. This character is an immature fool who feels she is entitled to the world and cannot fathom that she has to be a responsible adult. Everything needs to be given to her because that is the lifestyle she believes is what she's entitled to. That is what this novel is about. And here's the reason that this is worth mentioning in the review versus just the read-along series. That very element, the element of entitlement, is baked into the fabric of the novel. So much so that it is baked into the twist of the novel. The twist of the novel being when Pilot and Shane are sent back in time. In this novel, <clears throat> after they get back to 2011, all of the other people in the entire world go through the same motions as they did previously, unless they are acted upon by Shane or Pilot. Everyone in the entire world is therefore quite literally a pawn in Shane's game and is disposable to our protagonist. Everyone in the world is therefore subservient to Shane. It's a Shane-centric world. That is, the, that is not even definitional entitlement. That is new era entitlement. That is world recreating entitlement. Everything belongs to her in those moments. Okay. Is that unfair? I know. Is it fair to look at being sent back in time? Because after they get sent back in time, everything, become, everything happens the same way it did. So much so that somehow they're able to remember small details from six years in the past, yeah. which I'll be damned if I can remember what I had for lunch or if I had lunch. So much so that they 
they use them as pawns. They use these people as pawns. They make fun of them. They, they joke about it, right? Everything is there to be used by Shane. Absolutely so. Even the, even, even the minor characters that matter within the text, b the babes of the world, the Atticuses of the world, which, by the way, if Sarah was non-existent the first time around, she's definitely non-existent the second time around. Yeah, um, yeah, but we can't call any of the characters throwaway. That's not fair. Obviously not. They're there for a reason. The plot is throwaway. The Absolutely. whole story, the book is throwaway. In fact, I'm not keeping this on my shelf. No. I think this is going to the dumpster tonight. Aw. I'm serious. I've already marked it up. The we should have attached blood pressure monitors to us as we you know, reviewed this, but that's fine. Carry on. Is there anything else you'd like to... Where else? Where would you like to go next? I've got a few couple points here. I would just kind of hit wherever you want to hit unless you really want to dive into something. You raised the point about Leo. What, what point did you have about Leo? So I brought this up last week and we said we'd talk about it this week in the full review. During the second portion of this novel, the uh, throwback where we go back in time, it is revealed... To... Well, let's set up... The... So previously in the novel, Leo has been set up as a prick. He's been a prick. A, a necessary family member prick. prick. She loves Leo for the fact that he is her cousin, but... Cousin? Yes. Um, cousin, but there are times where Leo becomes prickly. Um, in 2017, the middle part of this novel... Leo's fallen off the face of the earth. Yeah. He has he's on lost times. He's lost his baseball scholarship, so he's working at a gas station. Yes. Um, and no one ever hears from him, and no one ever tries to contact him. So, fast forward to the past. When we move back in time, we get to do things again, but better. Leo, Is that where the title of this comes from? I know, right? Isn't it fascinating? Leo reveals to Shane that he is a homosexual. He's a gay man. He's a gay man. And he is having difficulty with this. Now, that's a big moment. That is a huge moment for Leo. A massive moment. But that is not the point of this. This moment is being utilized to make Shane look like a better person. Because she is the only one who says, Oh, let me tell you. Let, let's hear about that. I care about this conversation. She's doing what she should be doing. But it is being done incorrectly because it is not about Leo's feelings. It is not about helping Leo and putting him on the right path. It is about trying to make Shane seem like a better character. Trying to make her have some kind of, I, I don't know, emotional appeal. Make it seem like something is right about Shane. It is there to make her better. That is the only reason. And if this, <laughs> this is a hot topic right now. This is a hot topic, and it infuriates me that someone can get away with something like that in this novel, because we will probably get flack for just discussing it, but we can write and publish this, and it's fine, because it's in this book. Adrian? Dalton, you're wrong. Go on. It's absolutely worse even than that. Carry on. You... Had say, which don't get me wrong, you're not you're not wrong. You're just incomplete. You brought up the fact that Leo is there and he's gay. He comes out to her to make her sympathetic. It's worse than that. Leo is gay, but it's not to make Shane sympathetic. It's because that's how they connect. Shane, being an entitled coward who steals daddy's money to pursue her secret dream of being a writer is the same thing as being gay. It's the same social stigma. Don't you see? That's how our author is pleading to us. That's our connection. He has to hide who he is. I have to hide who I am. There is the same amount of social stigma, rep re repression, and social prejudice towards homosexuals as there is towards me, the struggling writer who might have to go to community college if this doesn't work out. That is the true incendiary moment of this novel. Leo is not there to make her a sympathetic character. Leo is there because we are supposed to relate her struggles as a writer and having to protect and hide who she is to Leo having to protect and hide who he is. More so, if you go deeper into that analogy, 
Leo comes off as a prick, and no one likes Leo because Leo is gay and he's hiding it. Shane is a prick. No one likes Shane. Shane has to flee her college experience because her roommates signed up for different roommates because no one understands her because she's a writer. These struggles are one in the same. Okay. That is the analogy that is being put forward. That is disgusting and despicable. That, with Shane being, like I said, an entitled coward who steals her daddy's money, is the same mechanism to society as homosexuality. That's what she is putting forth with that argument. That being a sleazy, slimy, lying dirtbag is the same thing as being gay. Can't argue with you. Is that fair? It's a fair argument. Is it that is. in, is that is in there? It is a fair argument. And if I may, if I may put this in a broader spectrum, and since we've got the pitchforks out, let's have fun with it. Are you moving on from this point? Nope. Okay. So we have multiple characters of different ethnicities in this. We have characters who are homosexual in this. We have Atticus. We have a Sarah, who we are assuming uh, is of some form. Uh, she Some form? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm flustered. Uh, we are assuming Sarah is of a diff different ethnicity than Shane. Are we? Yeah, uh, we, I think we talked about that the first video. I don't remember. Anyway, uh, but we also have Atticus, who is also a gay man. Uh, we have Leo, who is a gay man. All of these characters, every single person in here, if, and if we are in a generation we are gonna hold people accountable for their writing, and we are going to uh, hold people accountable for what they put into text, Every single character of ethnicity, every single homosexual character in this is completely throwaway. Unless you are rich, straight, and white, your opinion does not matter in this book. Yeah. So much so, I'm trying to think. I don't think we even have chapter fodder that comes up as a different ethnicity. All the people on the mountain when she's climbing the mountain are white. It... Am I wrong when, when Shane abducts Pilot the first time to take him to lunch and they go to the cafe from whence they are sent back in time? No, 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 no. Afterwards, when they're in London and Shane abducts him for lunch and they burst into the kitchen. Is there a man of a different ethnicity working in the kitchen? The I'm guy at sure. the grill, was he... Maybe not. Maybe I'm maybe I'm subject maybe I'm projecting that type of racism into this novel when really it's just a racism of indifference. It is a racism of um, the throwaway. It is a racism of dismissal. These people are not worth. But sticking on that point of Leo coming out to her, we get this quote on 341. Um, my vision blurs because I can hear Uncle Dan saying exactly that, homo homophobic slurs. Uh, how many homophobic, oh, well, we go right into that, I guess. How many homophobic remarks has he had to endure from Uncle Dan over the years? How many anti-writer remarks do we have to deal with from Dad? How long has he been struggling with this alone? How long has Shane been struggling with her writerdom alone? Was all that stuff he'd said about dating girls through high school a way to protect himself? Was all that stuff I said about pursuing a degree in gastroenterology to go to uh, England a uh, lie to protect myself? But here's the thing. No, it probably was not a way to protect himself. If he has said things that, which, by the way, in the very beginning of this, in the writer's note, this sort of reflects on life, right? Life experiences. No. Many people who are homosexual discover their homosexuality through pursuing heterosexuality. No, he was not saying these things to you to make you feel okay. He was probably actually dating girls and figuring out his sexuality that way. It was not all for you. It was not so you would feel comfortable. Is that fair? That's fair. That's a fair point. Okay, we're 20 minutes into a review on this. Do we have another topic we want to move into? What else can we talk about with Again But Better? I've got 30 things to talk about. Go on. This is where I just sit back and let you go. Dalton, what's wrong with a piece of cake? 
What's wrong with sitting down and having a piece of cake? I don't think there's anything wrong with sitting down and having a piece of cake. What's wrong with sitting down and having four pieces of cake every night of the week? It's a bit too much cake. You're going to make yourself diabetic. Absolutely. Because you're eating something that is hollow and sweet. Okay. This novel is the publishing industry giving itself diabetes. It is hollow and it is sweet and it is just a grab for what is there and makes you feel good at the moment. I'm sure they made a pretty penny off of this novel. What is this novel not doing? This novel is not training the next generation of reader. Nope. This novel is not training a generation of readers to be actually functionally literate. This novel is not training readers to read more difficult things to read. This novel is hollow in that manner. Does she get the boy at the end? Yes, she does. Boy, there's a little bit of icing on top, isn't there? Mm. This novel is <clears throat> diabetes for the publishing industry. And what happens, what happens when you get diabetes? If it goes too far, it's an awful thing. It's a terrible, I work in a pharmacy. I see this all the time. You, it goes untreated. And you think, when, when, oftentimes, one of the symptoms of diabetes is these massive mood swings, mm -hmm. right? Because your, your sugar levels are off. So what do you do? Well, I'm just a little down, let me get some sugar. I'm just a little tired, I need a pick-me-up, let me get some sugar. You don't know it, so you don't treat it, so you keep eating the cake until you lose a limb. And once they start taking toes, and once they start taking feet, boy, they just keep going, you know? And boy, when these small publishers close, it's just a small publisher. That was just a big toe. No big deal. I can still eat my cake. Then a little bit bigger of a publisher goes. And then you're just not thinking correctly enough to, to, to seek out, you know? You don't have those good writers around getting theirs. This is what is contributing to the slow demise of the publishing industry. Small publishers close because no one is trained to read literature in that way. Literature in the way that the small publishers thrive on. Instead, we get a shitty new adult excuse for a novel that is plastered with, with stickers that say YA Book Club. We're Barnes and Noble. Well, guess what, Barnes and Noble? Borders is closed. Guess what, Barnes and Noble? The little bookstore on the corner is closed. Guess what, Barnes and Noble? I've been in your store and I've noticed a decrease in staffing. Those toes aren't there anymore. The entire publishing industry, not just publishers, marketers, retailers, agents, all of this is going away. Literature is dying. Literature is dying very much because things like this keep being published. And things like this just perpetuate things like this. They do not make you move into Shakespeare. They do not make you move into the next literary movement. They do not make you progress into in a. They do not make you progress into actual literature. They do not make you progress into the classics section. They do not make you progress into picking up an issue of Tin House off of the shelf. It is just this. This is the end. There is nothing being prepared for the next course. It's just more cake. It's just more this. It's just more mindless, intelligence-numbing bullshit. There's nothing wrong with reading for escapism. There's something wrong with only reading for escapism. This is only escapism. There is no more here. There is no second level. There is no meta level. There is nothing in this to lead you to another text. There is nothing in this to lead you to progress. There is something in here to lead you to being a petulant little shit. And that is all. Feel this is the yourself. diabetes. I don't feel better about myself. I don't feel better about the world. I don't feel better about literature in general. It's a fair argument. It I is. don't want to be this salty. Look, everything inside me wanted to pursue this novel and give it some credit because this is someone homegrown from what we're doing. Absolutely so. Everything inside me wanted to be able to say, you know what, 
it's not for me. Because I could tell, I could look at the book and tell you. Yeah. I could judge by the cover. It wasn't for me. I wanted to be able to say it's not for me, but I can see why it is. I do not see why it is. That's fair. That's fair. This is clearly not for us. We agreed with that from day one. But when something is not for you, you can still find merit in it. You can feel, still find something you can appreciate. You can still find worth. Christine Riccio. Could she have published a book on her own without a 400 subscriber, you know, a buffer, basically, where they see nothing but sales? Sure, why not? Absolutely. Work at it, see what happens. Does this book get published if the publishers do not see 400,000 potential customers? No. Absolutely not. Um, here's the irony. Here's the sweet, the, the bittersweet irony of that. This book does not get published without Christine Riccio having the platform that she has in today's market. However, if the market of publishing, the potential sea of readers was there, that people were just gobbling up everything in the way that they did when the Saturday Evening Post was the thing to have, this might get published, right? If they were publishing anything because they can sell it all, yeah. this might get published. Instead, this is published because they have to have something to make money. they got to get that little sugar. That's what it is. 100%. This is extremely surface level. Shallow. Vapid. But here's the thing. So are Dr. Seuss books. They have more creativity and nuance and depth of character and character development and structure then does this but they are at a level they are for readers at a certain level of maturity and intelligence and Dr. Seuss books provide a stepping stone forward for that reader to develop shallow vapid stupid people need those texts to shallow, shallow vapid stupid people need texts to read. So God bless Christine Riccio for being able to do that. I, I don't know many people who would have the patience. And here's an argument I was making in defense of this text just days ago. Just days ago. This book is... <laughs> For the perpetuation of literature, for the perpetuation of letters, this book is good for two of the three main things. One, you've got people that are engaged and willing to spend money on literature. It's a good thing. Now that is, oh, look at all your capitalism. You want people writing full time. You do. Because it is a full time endeavor. So this proves that people are still willing to do that. And the labor, you've got the labor part covered. People are still willing to do the labor of reading. It's fair. It's a 300 plus page book. All, nearly 400. It's closer to 400 and 300. For no reason. But that third part is that literature creates individuals as opposed to standardizing people. This book is standardizing people in, per, in petulant fashion. This book is not creating individuals that would then go forth and be able to interpret another text in order to grow themselves from it. Which is the difficult labor, the artisanship of reading. So there's the labor of reading, which is, for example, dragging a block of marble from the quarry. Okay. Right? The labor of it is getting that block of marble home. The artisanship of reading is being able to carve out the... Uh, sculpture. The sculpture. The, uh, the David. The artisanship is sculpting the David from the hard labor of reading the book. This is what literature is. This sure. is what letters are. Letters are what, this is why one of the basic measurements of what was a civilization worth to humanity is the art 
that springs from that civilization. Because the art that springs from a civilization tells you what type of individuals, not only is that society creating that are brilliant enough to create the art, but there's a brilliance in consuming the art. Books, poetry more so, are the most difficult, literature is the most difficult form of art to consume. Okay. How difficult is it to watch a movie? Not that hard. It's not that hard, but there's still, once you're getting into the nuance of things, it's, it's, it becomes more difficult. Fair. Um, when I get to look at a Caravaggio, it's not difficult. But when I really study what's going on there, how, how every one of his paintings is in media res, how the tenebrism involved in the painting is put there, not for verisimilitude, but in order that your attention be drawn towards the correct things. And what are those correct things? Then it becomes more difficult. Literature, the very the hard part labor of it, the looking at the painting, the watching the movie, the listening to the music, is so much more difficult. So that by the time we get to the artisanship of it, you've really got to be cranking on all levels to Dude. get there. This does not train no. for that next movement. No. This is letting literature down. This is diabetes. And I don't mean to throw terms around like that flippantly, but I think that that is a necessary comparison. Oh, that's a hell of a way to put it. And I 100% I, I agree with you, honestly. Uh, <laughs> this Fan me, Dalton, I'm hot. This was, a, this was an interesting adventure, it was. We didn't know what we were getting into, but we knew we were going to review it. Because this is, like I said, this is a major book tour. This is the big one. Uh, this is our community at work. This I, is. I wanted so badly to be able to say it's not for me, but it's okay. You know. And that would really been fine. That and for three been videos, fine. I did, didn't I? For we, three videos. We. So uh, it, it sounds like we're being a bit harsh right now, but we have put forth four videos on this, and every single time, every bit of reading, we approach this with the same attitude that we do any other author. Yeah. Let the writing speak for itself. So I, I, I even question that myself, because. I kept making this excuse. This is a first novel. This is a first novel. Well, we read The Loner by Teddy Wayne. I didn't give him that credit, did you I? Did. You hated that book. I yelled at you for 30 you minutes. You yelled at me for 30 minutes. And you quit the channel for a year and a half shortly thereafter. It was a good book. Um, nor did I get... We read... There was another first novel we read on the channel that I absolutely hated. We've read several first novels on the channel. You just don't think of them that way. Fair. Um, golly, I can't remember what it was. But even just saying this is her first novel cuts some slack, that's justifying this. There's no reason your first novel should not be as good as your last novel. You're going to grow, you're going Fight to develop. Club. Fight Club, there's a great example. You're going to grow and you're going to develop. Things are going to change along your writership. Unfortunately for Chuck Paul, and it went the other direction. Fair. Uh, but there's no worth here, and there's no merit. There is nothing to harvest from and this book. And that's the thing. Look, I'm not saying it doesn't have the right to exist. It absolutely has the right to exist. Putting YA on there is absolutely damning. Saying that this is the beginning of the YA book club. I, 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 is it the beginning or is it just YA book club? No, this is club? the beginning. This established the Barnes & Noble YA book club. This is it. This is the beginning. Uh, to my knowledge, as of right now, this is the only book available for the YA book club. This I hope you're right first. about that because people, are, if you're not, people are going to toast us for that and ignore everything else. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. And I'm going to get salty. Um, but... To put this in YA, this is not, this is not, first off, on a structural level, this is not YA. It's not. We talked about that a little bit last time. New adult compared to young adult. This does not take place in high school. There are not high school aged people. It is just that our author is so vapid and shallow that her entire being is still in the 14 to 18 year old range. And I don't want to say that stuff. Do, do, do I seem like I want to say that stuff? You I don't. know that I've got a bit of a, 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 a bad reputation for, for tearing things apart. Let me justify you for a second. Let me give you a second here. Uh, how many years of school did you go to for this, for writing, for reading? For writing and reading, six. Six. How many years have we been doing this? Three. Damn near a decade. Just personal age and time. Damn near a decade. Well, if you want to talk about just plus writing, I've been writing since I was 
I don't even know how old, right? Uh, just on an academic level yeah, and a just professional an level, yeah. almost a decade. A decade worth of time. This is kind of a slap in the face. It is. And I feel like you have, uh, you're warranted to be upset by it. There are a lot of things wrong with this novel. There's a lot of things wrong with the uh, publishing and the marketing of this novel. And no one wants to address it. Can it exist? Absolutely so. You want to write something? You want to grind it out, get it published? Cool, throw it on the shelf. If it sells, it sells. Let the writing do the talking. Even then, I'm not opposed to you building a platform and, and, and doing it that way. I don't, I don't care about that. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm saying. You, absolutely. In fact, I've made the argument many times on the channel, that's the future of writing because of shit like this. But that's the future of writing. Is it going to be people investing in individuals that they want to know more about and from? Here's hoping. That is the future of writing. Because it certainly isn't the big publishers. Not while things like this are hot and steaming off the presses. Like a pile of dog shit. That's certainly not it. But the future of writing is creating your own platform and going forth from there. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. Yeah. But this is predatory. Putting this in YA is predatory. Absolutely. And so it's one of my points I've been making that this is not romantic in the least. This is dangerous grounds. This is, uh, it, wholeheartedly, coming from a background in law enforcement, this is a woman who kidnaps a man. And not only does she kidnap him, she grooms him. Until he basically breaks down, I, I would argue there are some Stockholm Syndrome things going on here, and accepts his fate. All because that's what she wanted. Because she would get her way. Because no one will ever tell her she's wrong. And she gets to assault someone else. Yeah, she assaults people. I, it, it, it's wrong, and it's uncomfortable. And again, can you have that character in literature? Absolutely so you can. But you have that character in literature for a reason. There is no justification behind this. This is just the way the character is. And it's played off as being cute and romantic. Adrian, you don't have kids, do you? God, no. And I hate making this argument. But if we are going to ban books because they're inappropriate for the reading audience, because maybe there's uh, some racist issues in a hundred-year-old book, and we're going to complain about that, how many people have taken the time to read something like this and think about it? Because this is the dangerous text that you should watch out for. This is the problem. This is, I, it, it's basically creating a culture of entitlement. A culture of do whatever you want because you should get whatever you want. You're the center of this universe here. Again, we've talked about it. If we had flipped the genders of these characters, we'd have a 30-page book. Because the protagonist would be in jail. We sort of do someplace else in literature. Go on. Despicable character that no one really likes. Very awkward in their sexuality. YA novel. Uh, eccentrism. Someone who, when faced with sex, flips out and flees. Holden. Holden catcher in the right. Catcher in the right. What is it that makes Holden acceptable for a young adult audience who shares a lot of personality quirks with shame what makes that okay that that is that catcher in the rye is read by teenagers across the country throughout time and will be versus shane and again but better you tell me holden never tries to pass off as perfect holden never really sympathizes with himself, let alone tries to get the reader to sympathize with him, even, w even if he does beg for it at times. The undercurrent of those passages, which again, we're talking about something that has to be interpreted, is a young adult generation able to do that? We see it time and again. We've, we've got a, a, a review for uh, Catcher in the Rye on the channel. We do. I get comments, I still get DMs, I still get tweets from people saying, oh, you know, I, I really enjoyed what you did with this. I read Catcher in the Rye when I was 15 and I hated Holden, but I identified with him. What does that do? It causes a schism between the you that is able to perceive Holden as undesirable and the you that identifies with Holden. If you identify with Shane in Again But Better, there is nothing there on any level to make you say, wow, 
I really wish I didn't. Fair. There is in Catcher in the Rye the necessity for the reader to judge the self. That does not pop up in this book. It doesn't. And that's what it's severely lacking. If you do identify with this character, if you see this character as yourself, there is nothing in here for you to grow from. As the protagonist does not grow, the protagonist does not change. There is nothing in here to make you rethink your dangerous level of thinking. It's unacceptable. And it, 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 it's just garbage. It, it's written garbage. There is no redeeming quality to it. What else would you like to talk about? I have Whew. one more point. Make your point. They go back in time, and because, oh, we're just going to reference popular culture, what's the first brilliant idea Shane and Pilot get together? They're going to go visit Harry Potter house? No. The, uh, okay. So maybe it's not the first. I don't really remember. Here's a, here's a pop quiz. Before we get into this, I was thinking about this while writing this review. How did they get sent back in time? Elevator magic. Were they in the elevator? Were they? I don't even remember. That's fair. It's so awful. I don't even care how they got sent back in time. Fair enough. I don't even care. Anyway. What, I never went back to look. What's one of the first things they did? They got the brilliant idea, you know what we should do? We should remake Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus. We'll be rich and famous. Yeah. Uploading Wrecking Ball to YouTube because you have knowledge of the future. So you cheat and hope that no one notices because you lack the skill to do it yourself. You use YouTube as a tool because you lack the skill to do it by the old fashioned way. Um, so you get rich and, and hope that you get rich and famous anyway. That is the perfect metaphor for this novel. You just want to leave it at that. You just want that to sink in. We've got rating and recommendation to go. Oh, that's fair. I mean, you just want to leave that comment at that? Just let it, I'm just going to let that float. It made me feel good about myself. Adrian, what would you rate Again But Better by Christine Riccio? 48 lamp posts out of 100. 48? It's generous. Uh, we usually do a ranking scale if you're unfamiliar on strip covered lids. Uh, standard A, B, C, D, F where A being 90 and above. Uh, everyone is now dumber for having read this. I award it no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. That's beautiful. You know why? Why is that? Because that was about the interpretation of a book. Was it? Yeah. Uh, and, and it's a pop culture reference. It's a pop culture reference from Adam Sandler, and what it was was interpreting a children's book. He was supposed to interpret a children's book. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you recommend based on this text? Uh, I want to be salty and terrible and say, it doesn't matter, read anything else, it's fine. Um, I, I do like your idea of Catcher in the Rye, bringing that into this was nice, but honestly, if you are looking for standard YA, uh, you are looking for what I believe is a good story, I have always toted this one, looking for Alaska John Green. I enjoy that novel, there's worth there, I know you don't care for it, but is it better than this? John Green is out. Tell me, say it. Say John Green's better than this, I wanna hear it. Oh, John Green is better than this. What would you recommend? Um, where are you going? Where have you been by Joyce Carol Oates? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea why. That's hilarious. I love you. Adrian, send you, us out. You've been on a hot streak. Do you want to send us out on this? You send us okay. out. I got because it. if I start going, I'm not going to stop. It's fine. Calm yourself. Calm yourself. Here's the thing, though. This was not particularly poorly written. You always know what's going on on the page. You always know where you are on the page. You always know roughly who is speaking. It's simple. It is a simple text. There's and it's complete. There. You have to give credit for completion. Let the writing do the talking. It's, not, it's, 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 it's not an ugly novel around the edges. It's just when you look at the content. You've got to have content. You can't just have writing. There's got to be something more to it. If you like this kind of thing and you are joining us for the first time. I just time, don't understand. I know. I if, you, if you're going to, if you're going to, three years, apparently, has been what's gone into this. It took three years to write. The plot's only seven years. You good? Yeah. If you like this kind of thing, and you are joining us for the first time here on Strip Cover Lit, we publish. I just really don't understand how you're going to bring your sexuality, the sexuality of a character in, and, ex and compare it to your writerdom, and assume that the reader is going to have sympathy for you based on the fact that you are identifying with this, you are, you're connecting with this other character based on how they're identifying, and expect that to fly. 
How do you expect that to fly? I don't even care about the era we're living in where call out culture and all this. I'm not even talking about that. In general, how do you expect that to fly? You could? I think so. Okay. If you like this kind of thing, and you are joining us for the first time here on Strip Cover Lit, we We're not always this angry. We're not always this angry. We're usually pretty amicable. We don't always run on for 40 minutes. We don't always, I, I don't know, I, I don't even know how long that rant was. We had to cut the video because of it. I have no idea how long I was ranting on the diabetes thing. It was a good rant. It was a fine rant. But we aren't usually this angry. We do publish a video every single day, and we will continue to publish a video Dr. every Seuss, single day. Dr. Seuss, for Christ's sake. Thank you so much. Dr. Seuss, for Christ's sake, provides a better jumping off point for the reader to that next point in literature, where you don't have to have pictures in the books. I would enjoy this more with pictures in the books. You would? Not a Christine Riccio, I'm going to be honest. Woman's terrifying. Fair enough. But just doodles, maybe, like, like Vonnegut. Vonnegut doodles? Like, like, like uh, what was it? Uh, would you imagine with, the doodles A man with this, no though? country. Uh, uh, apparently, the, the, the character just doodled all the time anyway, remember? Until she stopped writing which necessitated her stop doodling. Well, doodling and writing, they do go hand in hand. Are you good? If you like this kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. We do publish a video every single day and we'll continue to and do so. And where did so the writing go? Through all of 2019. Where did the writing this go? This is my moment, let me have it. We're done with this. We're putting it to rest. We can go throw it away outside afterwards. Make sure you leave a comment down below letting us know what you thought about Again But Better. I'm imagining this uh, comment section is going to be a minefield, but that's fine. That's necessary. If you have an opinion about this, state it. Back it up. We are more than happy to have a conversation about this novel. That is I what have we the do. willpower to try to will this into being good. Yeah. What am I doing with Twilight right now? You're making an argument for Twilight. I can make an argument for Twilight in the name of Christ. Yeah. What are we doing here? Anyway. Make sure you give this video a like as well. We always do appreciate it. And let's be honest, if this is your first time on the channel, we appreciate having you here. Hopefully you'll find something you like as well along the way. Make sure we, uh, we shoot this video out on the social media. We'd like to get a little attention on this one. We feel it was a warranted good review. Or at least stick around. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help us create more great content like this here on Strip Cover Lit, there's a link as always to our Patreon to be found in the description below.